Another story during the rounds today, the federal government announcing changes to the otherwise rather controversial school chaplaincy program, raising the qualifications required and no longer requiring the chaplains to be, well, chaplains. Instead, schools will be able to employ secular welfare officers if they prefer. Either way, that officer or chaplain will need a certificate five in youth work, pastoral care or equivalent qualification. Chaplains are not there to provide religious instruction or to proselytise, and that definitely remains the case. This is not a program that is delivering religious instruction and the guidelines and the code of conduct expressly forbid that. In those small number of cases uh, where charges of proselytisation have been made, they've been investigated. I'm very confident that this is a program that is delivering into school communities the kind of services they think benefit students. Now, the opposition says this is pure and simple a broken promise and an attempt to scrap the chaplaincy program altogether. The Education Union has welcomed the move. Tim, what do you think of this? Is it fair enough that schools be given the choice or is this a lost opportunity in an age when a lot of young people can go right through school and never get exposed to any sort of religious thought? Hmm, well, I, I, I mean, I, I think uh, this is an improvement on what has been uh, the case in the past. Uh, but I would prefer the chaplaincy program to be abolished uh, altogether. I think it unnecessarily complicates the role of government in what is a very grey area of public ethics. Uh, I think it's one thing for the state to be funding welfare officers or guidance counsellors in schools. I don't really see a need for government to be uh, funding school chaplains in public schools as well. And the reason's simple. If parents want their children in schools to be ministered, with pastoral care or spiritual guidance, then they're free to send their children to private school. It's important to maintain the neutrality of the state on this. Fiona, what's your view on this? If a, if a child in a school, perhaps they're being bullied, they want to talk to somebody, are they more or less likely to want to talk to somebody with a cross around their neck? Well, for sure, and I think that's the real question. You know, in Islam, somebody of an Islamic faith, faith, for example, would they feel comfortable talking to a religious leader uh, not of their background? Uh, uh, to, to look at it you know, a bit more broadly, the Education Union today saying something like one school counsellor in New South Wales to every 1,500 students, they say the money would be better directed at psychologists who can help you know, tackle issues that are facing, facing school aged children such as bullying, the massive increase in youth teen suicide rates. Uh, so a couple of lines of thought on that today and of course the opposition saying it's just a, a, a broken election promise. Ross, one of the things that the government is looking to do is to make sure that the chaplains that are already in the school under the program so far will be upskilled so that they, there's no doubt about their ability as counsellors as, as well as chaplains. What do you think? Uh, good idea. I mean, but John, I'd have to say in terms of the order of magnitude of this as a problem, if you listed the top 50 problems of Australian education, particularly the crisis in comprehensive public schools, uh, this would rank very low on the list. Uh, what we need to be doing is providing leadership in addressing the things that cause kids to go in great distress, desperately looking for a counsellor to talk to. I mean, that's what we have to do. Mm. Uh, we have to uh, strengthen the hand of principals rather than um, treating them as just functionaries and bureaucrats in a cookie-cutter world where they have no responsibility, no discretion, no capacity to hire and fire their own staff, just taking on transfer whoever the edu education department sends them. I mean, the, the Australian Education Union and the New South Wales Teachers Federation are, in my opinion, amongst the single most negative, corrosive, destructive forces in our community. They are a disgrace. They haven't had a decent leader in any in, within Cooey for 10 years. And most of the problems we're seeing today, including this now trying to work out what we do with all of these distressed, anxious, you know, wound up kids, is because the Education Union has systematically worked to try and destroy cultures of excellence, of, uh, of discipline within our public schools, and it's got to stop. All right.